uh, the Lord is stirring in our in our hearts and at, at church, um, you know, in the like the ladies' Bible study and the different things that the Lord's doing uh, with different committees, and we're starting to process family ministry and the things that the Lord is is stirring with within us. I think is amazing and encouraging. You know, I think of of even as these kids going back to school, as we pray, you know, um, even, you know, Roxy has a, has a kiddo going back to school as well. So we can just think of, of your church family, the kiddos that are here, and then we've got to think about the community, right? You know, every day when I leave here, there are we, this park is full of kids that go to these schools and in our communities. To me, here's a huge outreach that has been going on for a while that I just heard of, um, that they open the school doors, for one hour and let us come in and walk the halls. And to me, this is huge that we can pray for our principal, right? We can, we can pray for the board that runs the school. We can, we can pray for the kids that come from broken homes, the kids that are being raised by their grandparents. Man, they, we need to lift our community up in prayer. And here's an awesome outreach that we get to be a part of that they're going to unlock the school doors for us to come in and pray. And, and I think it's, I'm just excited to see what the Lord's going to even do with those prayers. I'm getting all pumped up. I don't even know if we're going to have time for a message today. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but there, there's so many neat things that the Lord's doing. Uh, you know, I was thinking about the soccer game that I went to yesterday watching uh, one of our kids. And then I look behind me and there's Bailey uh, running around. I'm like, what is Bailey doing here? And so now I'm yelling at Bailey, and I'm thinking, man, I'm, that, I'm the only guy standing up yelling. All these other moms and dads and grandparents are all sitting down in their comfy chairs, and I'm like, and Sydney's, I look over at Sydney, and I can think she's embarrassed. And I went, I guess I better go sit down or just keep yelling. Who cares, right? So you just get, you just ex- get excited for what the Lord's doing. Um, and so I just want to encourage you to be a part of the Lord moving and directing um, and and exciting. So please turn to your Bibles to Luke. Luke chapter 5. So the title of this is that Jesus seems opposition as an opportunity. Um, And and it's so true that, that Jesus sees man's soul and looks different at it. But the Pharisees want to bring opposition. They want to cause conflict. And so, so I was looking at this and I was processing, like, how true is this that sometimes opposition, we run, we run right? It, no one likes opposition. I mean, I don't like opposition, right? But Jesus, the way he flows with this opposition of even the Pharisees is, is pretty neat. And so as we read this text this morning, just to see, just look at it, our Jesus and how he responds to, to the Pharisees and where they're at. So let's start at verse 27. After these things, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. So he left. So he left all and rose up and followed him. Then Levi gave him a great feast at his own house. And there were a great number of tax collectors and others who sat down with them. And the scribes and the Pharisees complained against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors? And Jesus answered and said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. And I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for your word. Lord, that this morning that we get to glean on Jesus and what matters to Jesus and that we can learn from this. That we need to focus on what matters as believers. Lord, help us to see your word and and let it just penetrate our hearts. And walk out of here different today, Lord, because of what your word says. We thank you for your grace. Amen. So here are a few points that as we look at Levi here is first. So point one is conversion. Right? There was a conversion. So Levi had a conversion. Like instant conversion. Two, Levi listened. He walked in that, right? So there was, he, he said, come follow me. So Levi could have said, no, I got, some, I got some math homework to do, right? That sounds like a lot of fun to do taxes. You know, raise your hand if you love taxes. Just kidding. No one's going to raise their hands except for Barb. <laughs> so so he, 
He walked with the Holy Spirit. He, he's walking with the Lord. He said, do, and he's going, right? Some of us, when the Lord asks us to go, we talked about this in Sunday school, we, uh, uh, I don't know, it makes us uncomfortable. We don't always go, right? And three, what I love about this is that the Lord created opportunities to invite other believers. Conversion, walking, as, as he says, follow. And, and three, inviting others in. Man, I love this. I mean, to the point of this conversion is a relationship that bears fruit with Jesus. Man, you can see that in Levi's faith, that it was a true conversion. It was a true conversion because Jesus said, follow me, and he did. Man, he followed him. And then I had to stop and think of sometimes we, we, there's, we get caught up. How much did Levi know about Jesus? Not much. Levi doesn't have all this head knowledge and this understanding. He just knows that he needs to have a relationship with this guy, Jesus. And he does. He has this relationship. So to be a conversion, to, to have salvation, is to believe what Jesus did for us on the cross. And see that we're a sinner in need of a Savior, and then we walk in that. That is true conversion. This is what Levi did. Man, he was walking with the Savior our Father. And I think often Satan's trying to distract us from this walk. Satan's trying to curve us. He's trying to direct us. He's trying to say no to Jesus and yes to the world. But point two is this, this relationship is lived out. Man, that was Levi's heart, is that he wanted to live out his walk with the Savior. And looking at, at point three was Levi didn't care what all of his friends thought. You know, sometimes when we, when we are in ministry, we're thinking, what are they going to think? What are they going to do? What are they going to think of me? Man, I'm a changed man as a follower of Jesus. What are they going to think? What is the world going to say about me? But Levi left it all to follow Jesus, and then he turned around and had a party, a feast at his house. And I'm all about feasts and parties, okay? So if you have one, please call me. Um, and if there's no gluten-free options, then shame on you. Um, but I love this, is that this was Levi's heart. And not only that, is he invited Jesus to come to the party. And, and you got to know Levi, oh, who are all his friends? All the other tax collectors, right? That's, that's, that's his jive, that's who he's with. And I thought, man, how practical is this in ministry? Man, as we get saved, don't we want to reach our friends? Man, have a, let's have a party at our houses you know, and invite others in, right? You, you are, they're your friends. You, you can minister to them in, in, in a special way, not that anyone can, because of your friendship, right? And so Levi had this friendship with all these other tax collectors, and so he threw a whole party in his own town just because of his salvation. He wanted everyone else to know that he's a follower of Jesus, and he wants to throw a party and tell everyone about it. And that was, I'm going, wow, this guy had it figured out. This is awesome. Like, this is so cool that, that this was Levi's heart, and he invited Jesus to this, and he wanted others to be a part of what the Lord's doing in, in Levi's heart. And again, I go back to, like, like I've heard people, I can't, I can't serve Jesus with these kids. I was a part of a VBS once, and the, son, and the teacher wouldn't share Jesus. She brought, she brought the kid to the pastor because she felt like, I'm just, I'm just a Sunday school teacher. I can't share Jesus with these kids. And I went, oh my gosh, you have him. Share him. Some of us think we've got to have this great knowledge of who our Jesus is. But yet it's so simple that Levi, a tax collector, can understand it. And children come to Jesus. So share about Jesus what you do know. Don't try to share Jesus what you don't know. Share what you do know. Man, throw a party and, and reach others for the gospel. That's what Levi did. That's what Levi did. So look at verse 29. Levi gave him a great feast of his own house, and there were a great number of tax collectors over there who sat down with him. I know about y'all, but I'm thinking of this party in one sense sounds really boring. Like, were they just like, oh, let's, let's, talk, let's talk math, guys. Wouldn't this be fun? Like, a big math party does not sound like something that I would want to be invited to. So if you're going to have a party over math, don't invite me because I don't understand. <laughs> Verse 30, and the scribes and the Pharisees complained against his disciples saying, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors? They're sinners. 
right? Verse 31, Jesus answered and said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, talking to the Pharisees, right? But those who are sick have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Wow. Man, the Pharisees were worried about Jesus hanging out with sinners, but the Pharisees forgot about witnessing. The Pharisees forgot about the gospel. They forgot about salvation for eternity. Now the Pharisees again, right? They know the Old Testament. They got that bad boy memorized. But they're not living in it. But they sure got it. It's up here. But it's not out here. And they're questioning Jesus. About loving on sinners. Wow. Wow. But I'm sure the Pharisees would love to have a really good Bible study, but by golly, they wouldn't be going out praying. Oh, well, why would we pray at the high school or elementary? No, that's, there's sinners there. We don't want to do that. We would rather just be hunky-dory down. But Jesus is more concerned about those who are spiritually sick. And I had to stop even this last week and think, man, are we concerned about those who are spiritually sick? For eternity, forever. Are we concerned about those who don't know Jesus? Are we more concerned like the Pharisees and want to point fingers at those who are supposed to be righteous? Well, what are you doing? You're not living righteously, right? We often can judge, and it's easier to judge and point fingers, right? Than it is to go, well, why are we so concerned with, with followers not living righteous, but we're not concerned about reaching the lost for eternity? So in the case that Jesus is speaking to is the Pharisees, the lost will still be lost and still go to hell, and the Pharisees still want the righteous to be righteous. I mean, they had it so backwards. They had it so confused. And we'll talk more about this even next week, about the Pharisees headbutting with Jesus. And often the Pharisees, you can see, and I, and I could see it in ourselves and in the church we get so selfish, we get needy, we get too judgy as believers. We're, we're, we're so more important about those who are living righteously, but we're not concerned at all about those who even know Jesus. We could care less about those who know Jesus because we would rather pond about judging. We would rather point fingers and look, well, is that righteous? Is that not righteous? But we're, we're lost in the way of really living for Jesus. Because what was Jesus about? He was, he was about reaching those who are sick eternally. Then he was those who are falling. And I love that the way Jesus was just ministering, right? We think of this opposition. Some of us would be like, uh, this, this is no fun. But Jesus wanted to minister to the Pharisees where they were at. Jesus was trying to bring light to the darkness where they were at. And Jesus was concerned about those who were sick spiritually. And the Pharisees were more concerned about Jesus witnessing to sinners. That was the Pharisees' heart. And then I thought, man, is that, our, is that kind of our heart? Are we more concerned about living righteously? And, and, or are we more concerned about reaching those who are lost? Man, that just burdened me this last week of, man, are we truly burdened about the lost in our community and in our families? Man, there is such a lostness. And Jesus is doing what Jesus does, reaching the lost. Man, let's be more like Levi and just point people to Jesus. Share Jesus. Talk about Jesus. That's what Levi was doing. He was just trying to do outreach because Jesus did a mighty work in his life and he thought, he probably, man, I have some friends that need Jesus too. Man, I'm going to throw a party at my house. I'm going to have a big old feast and I'm going to tell others about Jesus. And Jesus is there. And I thought, man, is that not true with us? Jesus is here. Jesus is here and he's with me. So when I go to a feast, Jesus is there. Jesus is at that feast. Jesus is at that party, per se. Yo, let's get excited about what Jesus is doing. 
because he's working and he's wanting to minister to the lost. Man, he offers to set us free. Set us free from our sin and our bondage. Man, he wants us to reach others for Jesus. And then, with, and, and then he wants us to enjoy the fruit of that. Man, I'm sure Levi was just tickled to death that all his tax collector's friends showed up to his little feast to talk about Jesus. Man, think of the fruit that, that was stirring in Levi. You know, but some of Satan can go, well, who isn't going to show up? What if you don't have 100 tax collector friends show up? What if only 10 show up? What if only 5 tax collector friends show up, right? What, you mean you brought all this food? Who's going to eat it all, right? So Satan can stir and work, but then when we look at Jesus, he just, Levi didn't care. He just said, I'm going to do this. And whoever the Lord reaches, he reaches. But by golly, we're going to do something about it. We're going to reach people for Jesus, and we're just going to throw this big party. Man, are we serving? Are we serving? Do we have time to serve? Are we just too busy? Man, some of the believers that are serving already in this church, man, they're, they're too busy serving and don't even got time for the Satan to the what if questions. Because they're too busy enjoying the fruit, the fruit of what the Lord's doing. When I think of the ladies' aid and ladies' Bible study, man, you're, you're too busy enjoying all the ladies' fellowship and coming together and building each other, and, and, and you're too busy enjoying what the Lord's doing there. That's awesome. That's what we're about is, is serving each other and, and enjoying the goodness of the Lord. Enjoying the gospel. Y'all, we were created for outreach. We can see this in this content. We are created for outreach. And the Pharisees are not doing outreach. They're not reaching out at all. Man, Jesus wants to do outreach. And I, and I, and I paused for a second and I said, you know, I want to do a what if. What if we look at this passage and what if it was backwards? What if the Pharisees were doing outreach? What if the Pharisees were so concerned about the lost that they, they ran Jesus out of a job per se in this context? Because they were so busy outreaching. They were so busy ministering to the tax collectors. Jesus didn't have to show up to his tax collector Levi's office. Because the Pharisees showed up already. Right? The righteous, tax, the, the righteous Pharisees. I go, wow, that could be us. What if we got turned around and we started reaching people for Jesus? Instead of being like a Pharisee. Man, what if, I, I just thought, man, how cool would that be? Man, it gave us an example of what not to do, but let's get an example of what they could have done. Man, they could be ministering to the people. The Pharisees could. They could have been reaching people for the gospel. They knew it, right? They knew it. They understood it better than, than the tax collectors did. But they were too busy wanting to argue about Jesus. They didn't like the new Jesus. They didn't like what Jesus was about. It was rubbing them the wrong way. But I just thought, man, how profound that is. If we as believers would just get busy with the opportunities that Jesus is setting before us, man, there are so many opportunities. There's, almost, there's too many opportunities. Constantly have saying, no, I can't do that. We already, got, we already got a lot. No, we can't do that. We already got a lot, right? There are so many opportunities that the Lord is setting before us. Man, I thought, what if we did this? What if we did block parties like this, right? You reached everyone in, on your street, and you just had a big feast. That's what Levi did. You opened your house up, and you did a big feast, and you just talked about Jesus at it, right? I go, man, this is cool. This is what Levi did. This is what it would look like in today, 2023, is that we would have a big block party on our street, and that we would reach everyone on that street for Jesus. That's what this would look like if we were a Levi here in this, that we would just be reaching out to those who are brokenhearted, who need Jesus, sharing the goodness and the joy and the fruit of Christ. And y'all, a lot of y'all are doing that. So a couple weeks ago, this hit me, it was a couple weeks ago, so Sydney wasn't feeling good and, and uh, was getting ready for camp and, and uh, someone brought something and another church brought something and another church brought something. I went, Sydney, what is going on? Why is everyone bringing you food? But then no one brought me food when I wasn't feeling good. I said, I'm feeling a little jealous. And she was like, they like me more. <laughs> I was like, what? Did you just say that? They like you more? I was like, you punk. 
And then I went, okay, she is my better half, and she is pretty good looking. And so I was like, okay, I like her more too. So then I was like, okay, I can relate with the church members now. Okay, I get it. I mean, she's, she's better looking. I know. So then I was like, you know, I agree with the church members now. You know, I would, I would try to bless her too. But already that right there to us was, was, man, it was super encouraging to have people just show up. I didn't get any texts. They just showed up and said, here you go, and just blessed us. Um, and it, it was such an encouragement to Sydney because she's like, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling good with four kids in the house. I'm getting ready to go to camp. And so now she didn't have to run to the grocery store sick. I mean, right? I, okay, I gave her time off. I gave her a break here. But that's, that's y'all living for the gospel, it's just being a light in the darkness, sharing when there's a need, being a blessing. I mean, it's just, we have so many opportunities. You know, I thought of, of Mary down here, her, her daughter and granddaughter. Man, right, there's an opportunity that we can come and love on them. I mean, they have a baby that fell off a slide. Like, we have so many opportunities before us, and, and it's all around food, right? You know, it's just simple, it's just the simple things that we can do as believers, is just be light in the darkness. Y'all, just, food is amazing. I mean, I like food. I don't know about y'all. I like food. And then it made me even think, stirred more about VBS and just the food that y'all brought to Kenny's house for the mission, for the mission group. I mean, it was all around food. And it was, it was awesome. There was awesome food. I mean, Kenny and Cindy were in on the food thing. They were, they were enjoying the food. Like, it was literally, like, I'm thinking Levi, man. He, it was a party every time. It was awesome. And I thought, man, how can, can we not do that in our neighborhood and in our community? I mean, let's throw some hamburgers and stuff on the grill and let's go, right? Like, let's, let's have bonfire. Like, you know, bonfires in our community. Kids love bonfires. My kids want to play in the bonfire, Right? <laughs> But how easy it was is you, you, you went down your block and said, hey, y'all, I'm having a bonfire. I bought some hot dogs and some s'mores. Uh, I want you to come hang out with us. And you could just literally talk about the goodness of God. I mean, they can't argue with that. Hey, I want to share with you how God blessed me this week. And you just, you just go and see what the Lord does by sharing the fruit and the goodness of our Savior. That's all Levi was doing. And then, of course, the Pharisees wanted to come in and butt in. And so just know that you will have opposition when the Spirit is working. There is going to be opposition when the Lord is doing a mighty work. Man, I've experienced it so many times even here where, man, things are going good and there's some opposition, right? The Pharisees are trying to, you know, come in and mess things up. And Jesus is trying to make a difference. Man, he's trying to do a work. Man, he's trying to come and do some awesome things. So let's look at verse 33. And they said to him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers? And likewise, those of the Pharisees, but those of the Pharisees, but your eat and drink. And he said to them, Can you make friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. And they will fast in those days. So the Pharisees are starting up with something again, right? They're just like, come on, Jesus. They're throwing everything they can at Jesus because Jesus is with Levi and all these sinners, tax collectors, having a feast. And the Pharisees are just trying to just trying to bump him, trying to get him mad, trying to just trying to get a reaction out of him. And they're throwing a lot of Old Testament, like fasting. And, and so a little bit about, I had to study how much of these Pharisees, they, were fa they fasted often. And there was other records that the Pharisees were fasting and they were publicly known because they were righteous people. That's how, they were so righteous. They fast in public. They wanted everyone to know, hey, I am a I am faithful follower and I am fasting. Look at me. And it was very showy. That was the Pharisees and that's what they're doing here. They're very showy, but they're talking to the wrong guy. They're talking to the wrong guy. They're like, look at me. And they're going, Gee, why aren't you fasting? You're at a feast and you're eating with sinners. Why aren't you fasting? How righteous are you, Jesus? Man, they were just trying to throw him for a loop. But in other studies, Jesus fasted, but he fasted in private. So out of Matthew 6, 16 through 18, Jesus says, 
Moreover, when you fast, do not be like hypocrites with a sad contentions, for they disagree disagree their faces that they may appear to men before fasting. Assuredly, I say to you that you you will have your rewards. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your fathers who is the secret place and that your father who sees it in secret will reward you openly. So so in Matthew, Jesus is saying, men, fast, but tell no one. But the Pharisees are saying, Look at us. We're fasting. Why aren't you fasting? I'm righteous. What are you doing, Jesus? So they're, so they're at a feast, right? And they're just trying to cause opposition. They're trying to make Jesus feel guilty. They're, they're just trying to throw him down. or they're, they're trying to mess him up. They're trying to get him all frustrated and, and, and all just all confused. And I go, man, that is so true with other believers. Again, when we talked about that judginess, but we got believers who are trying to come in and stir and, and cause dissension and cause disunity because they don't like it. It's uncomfortable. It's not what they want. That's not how they, they want it to go about. It didn't fit what they were about. But the Pharisees wanted to be showy about it. They wanted to say, look at me, what about you? So verse 36, then he spoke a parable to them. No one puts a piece from the new garment onto the old one. And otherwise the new maker of a tear and also the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins or else the new wine will burst the wineskin and be spilled and the wineskin will be ruined. But the new wine must be put into a new wineskin. Both are preserved And knowing, having drunk the old wine, immediately the desires knew, for he was saying, the old is better. Y'all, Jesus is hinting here towards the Old Testament Mosaic laws, ceremony forms, right? So he's talking, Jesus was talking to them now in their language. He was giving them an illustration that the Pharisees would understand about the wineskin. And he's talking about that there's going to be a new dispensation or covenant, um, We are going into the church age. Jesus is now in a different, we are not in the Old Testament anymore. And the Pharisees are saying, no, we're, this is where we're at. Jesus, you gotta, you gotta look the part. You gotta be the part. And so they're trying to judge Jesus for being Old Testament, and Jesus saying, man, I, man, it's not like that anymore. It's not like that anymore. Man, Jesus come to redeem us. Man, he is the unblemished lamb. Man, we don't have to do sacrifices, right? So if you look at the Pharisees, it's all physical. It is all physical. It's all about how much can you fast. It's all about you and how hard and how, how poignant you are as a follower. It was, all, it was all by works. Jesus is saying it's not like that anymore. It's about Jesus and the grace that he offers. There's no works in that. You can't save yourself. Pharisees saying you could save yourself through works. Through fasting, being dedicated. Well, how, how, why are you eating? And the Pharisees couldn't fathom. They couldn't understand their Jewish traditions. They were so stuck in their old ways, they couldn't understand the new ways. And Jesus, the Savior, standing right before them, and they just couldn't fathom it because of their Jewish traditions. They just couldn't fathom it. It was beyond them. And if you know what Jesus was talking about, the wineskins, the old and the new, and you can't put old in in a new skin, he's talking about you can't mix the two. You can't take the Old Testament and mix it with some of the New Testament. You can't live by works and also by grace. That doesn't work. It's It's about Jesus and the grace that he gives you. It's a free gift of God. And it's not by works. In Old Testament, it was all about works. You go get an unblemished lamb, bring it, right? They're going to sacrifice it. It was works-based. But New Testament, there is no works. Jesus is the work. Man, I can't get any credit for anything I've done because it's all through the blood of Jesus. That's what Jesus is talking about here. They were so confused because they're so stuck in their Jewish traditions, their Jewish laws. And I go, man... Do we do that a little bit in the church as well? Do we mix things up and try to do things by works? 
Do we mix things up with the old ways and having a hard time with some of the new ways? And, and sometimes we, we try to mix these and, and it doesn't work. It, it truly doesn't work. We, we, get a little, we get a little confused, right? You've got to think Old Testament. Man, it's about, man, if your left arm is sinning, you cut that thing off. Man, if your eyeballs are looking at things you shouldn't, you cut them out, you take them out. New Testament, go to Jesus. Go to the cross. Get on your knees before the Savior. He didn't say cut your eye out. I mean, he wants you to go to him, not do it all on your own, right? Old Testament was what I can do to be righteous, and Jesus in what he can do. Man, it's all about him and his goodness and his grace. Jesus is so worthy, and Jesus is so good. And we often diminish that. We often diminish the work of Jesus. And that's what the Pharisees were headbutting with. That's what the Pharisees were having a hard time with. Man, they were truly having a heart problem. Man, the Pharisees were having a heart problem. And then I had to stop this week and go, oh gosh, am I having a heart problem? Do I have a heart problem within? Are the old ways of what I'm living is how it should be? Are the old ways is what controls me instead of living for grace in Jesus? Y'all, sometimes the old ways is what's really holding us back because we have Jesus now. And it's the same with us. I mean, it's a heart problem. We're, we're trying to live by works, but it's not how Jesus designed it. He wants us to live us in grace. I mean, He wants us to live in Him and the freeness that He offers. Y'all, that's beautiful. Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough to save our souls, to save our friends' souls, to save our tax collectors, right? Because those sinners, let me tell you all that math, that has to be a sin, right? It just has to be. It hurts my head. But Jesus came to save the eternal sick. Man, that's what Jesus was about. That's why Jesus was here. I don't know if you all know that, but Jesus came to the earth flesh to die for the sinner. He didn't come to die for the righteous. He came to die for the sinner that we may walk righteously. Man, I, I love that. I love the goodness of Jesus and all that he offers. But the Pharisees were really trying to just debunk him. And I go, man, I see, I've seen it often in our churches I mean, some of the believers are trying to debunk other de believers. They're trying to get them all riled up because they're more concerned about this than they are about saving souls. And I go, wow, that is so true. That we get so distracted, we're not even paying attention to what really matters. And I go, so that's, that is so true. I've, I've even heard the old ways, right? We're going we're gonna to go back. We're going to go back a few years. The old ways, right? I've heard the apple doesn't far too... How does it go? The apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, right? Man, the old ways. Is that not true in some of us? Man, as a kid, right? Man, if, if dad had a Ford, the son had a Ford. Sorry if you ever a Chevy fan. And if your dad had a Ram, he got a Ford. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but is it true? Man, the, this whole apple that falls from the tree... But then I think about this, that we go, yeah, man, this is how my parents raised me, and this is how I'm going to be. But what if our parents raised us a little worldly? We live a little worldly. It's true, right? You say, well, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, but I'm going, sometimes that's embarrassing. Because we look at the tree that our parents, quote unquote, created, was so worldly. Man, Jesus has no fruit in that tree. But yet we, we say we're part of that apple. Man, I just thought, what about breaking the traditions of our families by living for Jesus? Man, I want to be a part of a tree that bears fruit for the kingdom of God. I don't want my kids to say I was an apple that didn't fall too far from the tree. It better be Jesus' tree, not Thomas's tree. Because I've heard it and I see it and it's true, right? You know, some of the things that you, when you go buy a car, you just go, well, this is what dad got, right? You know, some of you are Honda fans or Ford fans or Ram fans. Whatever it is, it's true. 
because that's what we were raised with. That's what we know. But some of the things that we were raised with are nasty. Some of the things we know are disgusting. Yet we still do them because it was such, we hold so tight onto them. We hold so tight onto those, those standards and they're terrible standards. Man, and I thought this week about all the things that my, my parents taught me has nothing to do with Jesus. Some of the things they taught me and I know did nothing for me. And then I was like, I got to fix that. So I had to search my heart this week of seeing what's going on in here that my parents taught me that has nothing to do with Jesus. Because there's some things that I need to fix. So my little apples don't fall too far from the tree, right? Man, I need to break a family tradition. And then I had to wonder how many of y'all have a family tradition that you need to break. Because the Pharisees were struggling. Man, this is what I knew about my Jewish traditions. This is what, this is what it's about. They stretch the truth, right? And now they're wanting Jesus to do it, right? And they've they got this tradition and going, Jesus, you've got to follow this tradition. And he's the Savior. Per se, he's the new tradition of going in grace because of the blood that he shed. Not by the works, but it's so true as, a, as well as for us as believers. Why don't we start some new Christian values? Why don't we, we start something new in our families that our kids want to follow? Why don't we do some things that build the tree for Jesus and actually bears good fruit for the gospel? Y'all, I'm tired of hearing the apple falls from the tree and it's awful. It's disgusting. It's sinful. It's, it's evil. It truly is evil. But yet we, we just, we crave it. It's what we know. But then we think we're new creatures in Christ Jesus. Man, the old is gone away. You're no longer part of that old apple. Man, you're, a, you're a part of a new tree. Man, live out your new creation in Christ. But it's familiar. No, it's not. Man, you're a new creation. Right? We talked about Sunday school, about living in the fruit of the gospel. And we're going forward in Jesus but that you got that sin nature going, hey, you used to do this. Your parents taught you to do this. What about this? What about that? Right? Man, my parents, their parents taught them how to smoke. So my parents smoke. Right? I don't smoke, by the way, just so you know. But right, that's, that's just one example. It was just something they did. They taught their kids to do it. I mean, there was a time where my dad tried to teach us chewing tobacco. He used red man chewing tobacco. I can tell you the color of it, the package and everything. He shared it with us as kids. I mean, that's just what parents did, right? They shared with what they did and they did what their parents did. It was just, it was like a passing it on. But I'm going, why? We need to do that for Jesus. Pass on the salvation of Jesus. Man, we are a new creation in Christ. Pass that on. Man, we, we are in this new foundation of Jesus. Stop following the old ways because they're not good. They're not healthy. They're not biblical. Embrace your new identity in Jesus Christ, y'all. Embrace your new identity in Jesus Christ. That's what the Pharisees were having a hard time with. They were having a hard time embracing the new identity of the New Testament Jesus. And so are we struggling with that new identity? So a couple of closing points here is Man, are we being a light for Jesus in his name? Second point, Jesus came to save the lost. Jesus is about lost people. Three, are we making opportunities to shine for Jesus? Remember last week I threw water at you? Man, are we splashing others for Jesus? Man, are we being a light in our community for Jesus? Don't make me get the water back out. Four, Jesus not by works, but he's by grace that we would live righteously. we got to get that clear. Jesus wants us to live righteous because of what he did for us on the cross. That our sin debt has been erased. 1 John 1, 9, he keeps erasing it, erasing it, erasing it. We come to him and he erases it. Man, there's no works in here. It's all about him. And it will always be about him. Get out of the way of that. Quit trying to live by works and live by the grace of our Savior. Man, make opportunities to be a blessing in your community. Five, what about those old ways? Do you have some old ways like the Pharisees that you're having a hard time shaking? Man, your parents taught you to drive a Ford, so you got a Ford. Maybe that's one of those old ways. No, I'm just kidding. But is there any old ways of sin that entangles you that is holding you back from living righteously? 
Is there any old ways that is holding you back from walking closer with our Savior? Because the Pharisees were struggling with a relationship with Jesus because of the old ways. And so I want to encourage you to don't live like the Pharisees and live more like Levi. Man, go ahead, just jump in and follow Jesus. Leave it all. That's what Levi did. He left it all and he jumped in. And so I want to encourage you to leave the old ways. It's going to be hard. But make, make, it, make it worthy. Make it worthy. Let me pray and then uh, Jeff will close us in song. <coughs> Dear Lord, I thank you so much. Lord, I thank you that you died for our sins. Lord, I thank you that you are the unblemished lamb, that we can come to you with a, a pure, true relationship. Lord, there's nothing we can do in and of ourselves. Man, the Old Testament says, clean up the outside before you come to the temple. And Jesus says, come dirty and I will clean the inside. Lord, will you clean us? Will you shape us? Will you mold us? Lord, help us to not be judgy like the Pharisees, but be like Levi and just share you with what we know. Lord, help us not to be just puffed up with head knowledge, but live practically for the gospel. Lord, be with this church. Is, is there so many things stirring with, with newness? I mean, it's exciting, Lord, what you're doing. Lord, bring unity within that. Lord, bring unity within this church to be about you, Lord. That it will always be about you. That this church will still be standing after we, we go to be with you. That the gospel will be preached on this corner right here in Matthew's, Lord. Lord, would you go before us and work all these things out for your glory and your honor. Amen. Amen. Jeff, will you lead us in closing song? I was thinking about the sign that the uh, the sign lady put up. It mm. it fits so well. It does uh, with with what Pastor Thomas was saying today. And until Jesus is enough for you, nothing else will be. Amen. Uh, I tell you, mm. we're going to sing a song that kind of ties in with that. When I remember the the uh, the story behind it is well with my soul. Um, this man lost his family and for him he, he could have dwelt on that but he was able to make Jesus enough Amen. it's a hard place to be hmm. it's a very hard place but Jesus is enough Amen. he's enough <laughs>